In this video I'm going to demonstrate the value of a ring tester for checking shorts within a coil and some of the advantages that it has over using a conventional ohmmeter. Now what you're looking at here on my oscilloscope is a ringing effect that generally occurs when you disconnect power to a coil. What you can see happening is the power doesn't just disappear instantly as it would in a non-inductive circuit but it tends to oscillate before it dies down. In this case we're sending pulses of DC power into this coil so your peak pulse would be up here and then the minute the power is disconnected or the pulse ends you can see the oscillations occur until it reaches a zero line. Now to simplify what you're looking at here I set up a little demonstration to talk further about what's what's going on here and hopefully this will simplify it for you. What I've got here is a DC battery and a transformer out of a microwave oven. And what I'm doing is hooking up the primary side of the coil here to my DC power supply. By the way, if you ever play with these microwave transformers, be careful. They put out a very deadly secondary voltage and current combined. When you have the two combined at a high level, you got some dangerous stuff. Anyway, basically what you're looking at here is, is the uh, collapsing magnetic field producing a secondary jolt that comes back out of the coil the minute you disconnect the power. So it's interesting how this works because as the field in the coil collapses, it, the magnetic field that you generated when you hooked it up to power moves outward from the coil and as it moves back to the wire from which it originated, it has to pass by neighboring wires within the coil and that's why you get a secondary jolt of power coming out of a coil when you disconnect the power going to it. Now what's interesting is that the jolt of power that comes out of the coil, known as the back spike, is reverse polarity of what you put into the coil. So it actually reverses polarity. And what happens is the minute you disconnect the power here, there's actually still conduct conductivity between that arc and this terminal here. The minute I disconnect the terminal and it's actually jumping across the gap, the back spike is, jumping into the battery and then allowing a, uh, I guess it's basically shorting out the coil momentarily because it jumps across the plates of the battery. I don't know if you could say the battery works like a capacitor or just a conductive circuit momentarily for allowing the back spike to return. But basically you get this reversal of polarity that occurs over and over. And that's what you're looking at on the oscilloscope here. You're looking at a ringing effect where you can see again the initial pulse then you see polarity reversal it goes from positive to negative and then it goes you know back into the coil and it just tends to oscillate and dies down now what I'm going to demonstrate here is the value of a ring tester I happen to have one of these uh, fancy blue ring testers right here and show you a little bit about how it works and the value of having this sort of thing over a conventional ohmmeter if you wanted to check for a short in a coil uh, what prompted me to want to set up this experiment was I was recently talking to my friend Steve. A lot of you know him as NorCal715. And I was telling him about my new ohmmeter that will divide an ohm into a thousand divisions. And how I figured I could probably just discard this blue ring tester. And I was incorrect about that. And he set me straight on why that is. In fact, he, he challenged me to set up this little experiment here where I could see what a shorted coil will do to, to the oscillations that would normally occur within the coil and how it would be hard to detect something like this with a conventional ohmmeter. So what I did here is I wound a coil. I got this uh, coil out of a, uh, or the core out of a microwave transformer and just kind of rewound a primary myself there. And uh, right now my ring tester is sending pulses into this coil and we're looking at the ring effect on the oscilloscope. Now I'm going to take this one shorted loop of wire I've got here. Actually it's got two turns in it. I'm going to set it on the top of the coil here. It's not electrically hooked up to it, it's just hooked up inductively. And as you look at my pattern here, let me turn out the light for a second. As you look at the pattern, now you can see the oscillations are greatly diminished. In fact, I'm going to lift this coil back up off here and watch what happens. So you can see that the uh, ring effect is dampened down when I set a coil on top here like this. And that's essentially what the ring tester is good for. It'll actually 
enable you to find shorts that would be too hard to see with a conventional ohmmeter. In fact, it's especially useful if you don't know what the resistance should be. I'm going to go ahead and uh, hook this up slightly differently. I'm going to remove this one component here. I'm going to let you see on the ring tester itself, when I take my shorted coil now, here we're looking at the ring tester and the bar graph indicates the quality of the coil. You've got three potential green LEDs on top, that means the quality is good. Or if it's in the yellow, it's sort of mid-range, and if it's in the red, you've got a short. Or It could also be that you've got a coil that doesn't have much of an inductive ring to it. So this isn't going to tell you on every coil whether it's good or bad, but it often comes in handy. So here, for example, I'm going to take this loop wire again. Oops, just dropped my loop. Oh, okay. Anyway, we're going to take this loop wire, and while looking at the ring tester, we're going to set this loop on top here. And you can see the ring tester bar graph indicator drops down into the red zone. And again, all I did was take this shorted loop of wire and set it on top of the coil. And you can see the dampening effect by the blue ring tester here. Anyway, I appreciate my friend NorCal setting this or and challenging me to do this experiment because, to be honest with you, I never fully understand or understood rather what why I needed this ring tester so uh, anyway I'm fully convinced it's a very useful device if you don't have one you might consider buying one it comes in handy thanks for watching the video and if you like it please give me a thumbs up